Hello YouTube, I'm back again with another video. This time I'm going to be doing deck profiles. It's been a while since I did one. I could uh, showcase a duel with this deck um, uh, before I do the deck profile, but I just considering like, how the format is today, and I've been trying to slowly step away from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! I just want to give you my card choices, uh, give, you, give you my like opinion as to what makes the deck very versatile and what it's capable of based on my playstyle. So obviously starting off we're playing 3 Exodius, the ultimate Forbidden Lord. Again, this is a rank 10 Time Lord deck. Usually you're not going to have many uh, monsters in the graveyard since you're playing tar Time Lords because usually what happens they when the, during the standby phase, during your next standby phase, they get shuffled into the main deck, as you can read. Is during your standby phase, not any standby phase. So um, the reason why this is useful is because it's it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna go back to a combo that I'm gonna show you guys. But usually you, just, you get to make the most out of this card. Shuffle all monsters from your grade to the uh, deck. You supposed to summon it as a level ten mon um, uh, rare XC uh, fodder. So and for obviously for our time lords playing Lazy on the time lords starting off. Uh, usually what they have with the, the, the effects of time was they can't be short battle or our card effects that they and one also is that if you control no monsters you can normally summon them without tributing and they have an effect that applies at the end of the battle phase which I'm going to showcase you with this card at the end of the battle phase if this card battles you can shuffle all cards from your opponent's graveyard into the deck uh, which is very useful which is must needed because that's where a lot of the, the players get a lot of resources utilizing cards in the graveyard. Although stacking cards in the graveyard can be a good thing, but there are times it's like if the opponent has it, you want to be sure to eliminate their resource, even if it isn't in their deck or hand. But to ensure that like all of those cards from the graveyard go back to the deck, so that way usually you can't utilize cards from the deck unless there's another card that says otherwise. And its other effect is if once per turn, if your opponent were to draw a card, inflict a thousand points of direct damage to them. Sorry if, I, if my nose is snuffling, I do have a cold. Don't mind that. So, this is where I'm going to continue. So, <coughs> uh, uh, sorry about that. Uh, moving forward, uh, Meteon the Time Lord. He helps get around monsters that can't be destroyed by battle, or I mean, that can't be destroyed by card effects, or be targeted because what happens if this card battled at the end of the battle phase it turns you turn all that many monsters on this card and if you do inflict 300 points of direct, direct damage to your opponent for each card returned <coughs> sorry and uh wow my cobalt is really bad maxing out on three Michi on the time lord this card is very important why you have to play three because their effects are not hard once per turn, but if you, the more copies you run of Mitchot, um, usually happens that in the battle phase you have your opponent's life points. So you get their life points straight from 4,000 to 2k, and then if you have a specific XC boss, you can burn them for game. And main reason why our max out exists is because of this card, Mirror Lady Bob. You don't really see this card be in many decks, um, it's very uh, unique. In this build because it specifically works for this deck although in order to summon it does have some restrictions you got to control these one face up monster I have no monsters in the graveyard but the best part is that when this card is special summon this way I apologize excuse me um, when this card is special summon this way this card be level becomes equal to the total level of all the monsters you control so how this were this this fact works is that if you control at least one face up monster in the field, you have no monster in your graveyard, you can literally special summon this card for free. Although, the downside is that if you have monsters, this card's essentially a brick. But with this deck, it doesn't really matter because you want to go for the OTK as quickly as possible. This enables the OTK uh, and then it ensures that you have more resource, whether it might be from your hand, field, or graveyard. So that it helps you save your resource, so you don't have to use too many of your cards to pretty much kill your opponent a lot quicker if you go if you get what I mean. So 
Hopefully you guys understand, but uh, obviously we're just playing two Raphion. This card so much it one it, it isn't better than Michon, but it can win you games depending on how many life points your opponent has. But like I explained, they all have very similar effects. But at the end of the battle phase, if if this card battled an opponent's monster, uh, you can deal damage equal to one mon one monster your opponent controls that this card battled equal to that monster's attack. So it's not original. It's like whether well, that monster may be Grand Majin has eight thousand, you can win for game. So if they tend to overdo, if they if their plan is to over if, to like increase the attack of a certain monster and then try to win with that one card, this card is always going to come in handy in that situation because unless they have response to it, whether it be a imp infinite permanence, whether it may be um, whatever card effect that forces them to get to force them to shuffle. That would force these cards to either be set to the graveyard by card effect, shuffled to the deck, or banished, or equipped. There's hardly that many else because a lot of players tend to build a board where it's like full of omni negates, and that it's also considering the timing. It really you have to also be able to like match, like basically use the cards effect timing correctly. If not. This card's an easy win, when depending how you utilize it. So, this card we're maxing out on because uh, what the card I need to mention is Sandai and Tower. He's definitely a lot different from all the other time modes since he has 4k attack and defense. Considering his effects are a little different, not by too much, but if only your opponent controls a monster, you can normal summon this card without tributing. So that you don't have to control, you could still control monsters, but this card can be normal summon with, uh, sorry, but it's only if your opponent controls a monster, my mistake. Either way, even if you do control monsters, because the wording is slightly different, does it uh, match with the other cards, but you can normal summon this card with tri without tripping. But the only way to do that is if your opponent, only your opponent controls a monster. But at least the best part about this card is that he can actually, just, he's, only, he's the only Time Lord that can literally destroy a monster by battle. On top of that, if this card battled, you can literally inflict 2,000 points to your uh, dam. You can literally inflict 2,000 points of damage, direct damage to your opponent. So it doesn't have to battle a monster as long as this card battles you. And if they have 2,000, that's game. That's it. And this, there's a reason why you play three because you're playing three mid shots. So you can also time the effects. You can go if your opponent has 4,000 life points, you could time it like. Sandy on effect and then chain with Michion. So not only would their life points be half to 4k, I mean from 4k to 2k, Sandion will burn for the extra damage. And just kill off. Because Michion does not outright win you the duel, it just literally halves their life points. So that's where Sandion will come play just in case. That if you manage to have this guy and then you use another monster to summon Michion. You always want to make sure you have your opponent's life points before you deal the 2k so you can ensure the victory you can, so that you can actually game your opponent. Obviously, we got to max out on this card. Three Time Maiden. Um, this card uh, is, uh, is a Time Lord card, but its name is outside the archetype. As you could tell by reading its effect, it's different compared to the other Time Lords. This card can be tributed. Use this tri two tributes for the tribute summon of a time lord monster. You can tribute this card, but the best part is like if you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. And you, I'm not gonna already explain the other effect, but you can tribute this card, add one time lord monster with zero attack from your deck to your hand. Unfortunately, you can't add Saturn since it does have zero attack. But on top of that, you can banish this card from your graveyard, special summon one time lord monster with zero attack from your deck, ignoring somebody conditions, ignoring ignoring somebody conditions, excuse me. But you cannot special summon other monsters during the turn you activate this effect. And the reason why this card is so important uh, is because this is what helps enable your Exodius comp, uh, the Exodius combo. So the first thing you want to do is tribute to search for a level 10, normal summon your level 10 time lord, that's zero attack defense. And then you want to reshuffle, you want to shuffle back the time maiden to special summon Exodius, exceed summon. For one of your direct like, Xe monsters, and the best part is because it's not being sent from the field to the graveyard, it's being detached as material. 
it doesn't get banished, it gets sent to the graveyard. So, so you you it has an infinite loop that you constantly use with Exodius as well as Mirror Ladybug. And our final monster, which happens to be uh, our spell trap removal card, is Safiel the Time Lord. Uh, if this card battled, consider how slow this effect is. You're not going to see it too often, but if this card battles, you shuffle all spell trap cards your opponent controls into the deck. That only happens during the end of the battle phase. But if, the, if this is the best part, the only the best part about this card, what makes it more useful is that if this card is set for the field to the graveyard, you literally draw one card for free. Which is why we're playing two advanced draws. So you're essentially drawing three cards because you trip you one face up level A or 10 uh, monster you control, draw two cards. And the reason, even though it seems like a high risk, high reward card, this helps us set up our other removal spells and traps or whatever monster we utilize. So it helps you dig for more resource. Uh, Foolish Barrel to obviously go with Time Bane's effect to Special by Toddler from our deck to Lightning Storm. You could go for three, but this is a case uh, your opponent's playing back row, which is this deck is very vulnerable to, as well as Harpy's Feather Duster. One, one for one, some of the time it made it. Pot of Extravagance, since you don't, you don't always have to tie the with the extra deck, but this is it sure is because a lot of times the time they're about to get shuffled back to the deck. And you want some sort of way to get as many cards as hand as possible since they don't summon that many monsters. Uh, our, for our traps, Destructive Doom Karma uh, Cannon. It's not once per turn, changes many monsters of the field as possible to face down position. If either player controls the monster, they must send all face up monsters they control to the graveyard. The reason why I think this is a really good time is because this helps them get uh, bypass their uh, negative effect when they're, when they're forced to be shuffled from the field to the deck during your standby phase. So this can help you get around uh, their negative effects and you can utilize the effects once again and potentially whether it deal more damage, have your opponent's life points, or just get rid of more of the resources whether it be on field or grave. Evenly matched, not much to say because this, like I said, this card, this deck is very vulnerable. It doesn't summon that many monsters. So to make up for it, you want to get rid of as many cards our opponent controls as much as possible. And our last trap, which I where we're playing, which we're playing a play set of, is Torrential Tribute because, um, as you can tell, Time Lords are immune to uh, card effects that destroy, and they cannot be destroyed by card effects. So not only would your monsters remain, but your opponent's monsters will end up going set to the graveyard, whether they are uh, vulnerable, whether they can be destroyed. So side decks up to personal preference, not much to say, but I'm just gonna go straight to the extra deck. Play two Divine Arsenal Zeus. No need but to say very generic uh XC monster and you which is very he heavily utilized. You can send all of but you can attach two materials, send all other cards from the field to the graveyard, send uh all cards on the field to the graveyard. We're also playing the Spider uh, uh, XC package, which I find very useful. This is also uh, being used in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal Mega, and is mainly to go into the Sevences, but I'll explain what the very first Tarantula's effect is, since this card is also has a lot of synergy with this deck. So going back to this card, uh, all monsters you control gain attack and defense equal to the difference between your life points and your opponents. So whether you have way more life points in your opponent, that, that's still... A huge benefit because it's not whether you have whether you minus or plus it's between the difference so if you have more life points this card you have way more life points up your opponent than your opponent when well, your opponent has 100 life points and you have 8,000 life points this card will literally have 7900 attack and defense points and each time this is not once per turn um, uh, need I remind you guys because this well this card has been XC materials each time your opponent special summons, you deal 600 points of damage to your opponent, but it's it's about more useful if your opponent's about to lose. And maybe, unless this card, depending on this card's attack and defense points, then yeah, it's worth sticking around. But once per turn, you can detach one material from this card, destroy all face-up monsters your opponent controls with attack less than or equal to this card. On top of that, this this is not this card doesn't have a negative effect because if you do manage to use the, this effect, he can be able to, able to attack for game and deal more damage. 
So obviously we're going to 7 cents. This is simply because he's an easy 4k beat stick summon. If you have a rank 10 or level uh, 11, or we sorry, rank 10 or 11 Dark XC monster, which you control, which is Raven's Tarantula that you see here. Uh, what, what's going to happen is if this card summoned this way, you cannot use its uh, detach material effect, which is if you you want to material, you can detach two XC materials from this card, best as many special monsters your opponent controls as possible, then attach one of those banished monsters to this card as uh, XC material. And on top of that, this card has a non once per turn effect. If this face up card on the field will be short battle card effect, you can literally attach one XC material from this card instead. And for our playset, we're going into number 81, Super Dreadnought, uh, Rail Cannon, Super uh, Dora. Since we're playing part of Extravagance, you might as well utilize these. This card's very useful. Uh, on top of that, even though this card can be kaiju, literally tributed, whether it be Lava Golem or whatever, but this ensures that you are heavily protected. This one card heavily protects you. Since you know you don't control that many uh, cards, like I said, you don't summon that many monsters. But once per turn, you could detach one material from this card. They target one face-up monster on the field. The target is unaffected by card effects, except its own, until the end of this turn. So it's until the end of this turn is unaffected by card effects. And another card that I would like to mention where I'm also playing is a one of uh, Sky Palace. The Gaudi die, sorry, it's, it's a one of as well as uh, seven sins. The I uh, go back and what I said, so but you can detach one material from this card, the target one card you put controls, destroy that target, and if you do inflict 1000 points of direct damage to your opponent, this effect is hard once per turn, but it cannot attack the turn you activate this effect. But this is a case you're about to kill your opponent, even though it doesn't have the best effect. But this ensures that, like, because it's not supposed to, it's not meant to be as broken as the other monsters, but even though it cannot talk, but this is a case there's a problem card that your opponent is utilizing, utilizing that may hinder your, your deck, hinder your field, your time loads. So that's why it's important to go into this guy, just in case. So the effect on field is the effect your time loads on field. And obviously we're maxing out on Gustav Max, which is Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon. Uh, obviously his effect is the best as your generic rank 10 XC monster because once per turn you can detach one material from this card inflict 2000 damage to your opponent and if you manage to have two that's literally half the opponent's life points and if those two survive you man if those two match survive you just pretty much kill them in the net on your next turn so. but the reason why i played this is because this will help us potentially go into game since we're playing a play set of Super Dreadnought Rail can a Juggernaut Leap because the whole point is that your opponent's life points will get to 6k and you'll ex you'll exceed using one of your machine monsters which happen to be rank 10 with this guy. So the best part about this card is that to ensure because of uh, Rogus of Max it helps start off our OTK on the turn we are about to before we go into our battle phase we we'll use Leap's effect. Once per turn, you can attach one material from this card against 2,000 attack and defense also for the rest of this turn. You can only declare attack with this card. During each battle phase, this card can make attacks almost up to the number of material it has plus one. So depending on the number of materials it has, it can attack that, that monster that many times. It can attack all monsters and that many times depending on the materials that are attached to the card. Uh, for, sorry about the, st the stifle, you guys. I just want to proceed with this deck profile because I was very confident about it and there's so much detail that I want to include and I wasn't going to let my cold stop me from making this video because there's so much that I want to speak out and address about this deck for those who are just playing who were decided to play outside of tier 1, tier 0. Uh, this is a deck that I have fond of that I own for a pretty long while, um, and in which I'm going to be using locals this Thursday. I'm going to be sure to make the most out of it. Uh, but again, this is to help uh, encourage innovation, more strategies, so that people don't have to heavily rely on the meta so they can help save their income, and that they have more fun playing Yu-Gi-Oh! That, that, it, that it is rather than this format, because 
I would rather make it so that you guys have the benefit and you can enjoy your life and see for yourself how worth it it is seeing different decks be played because to make the game that more like uh sorry about my cult i was about to sneeze um so that the game could be more interactive and that people could actually appreciate your ideas and that you could all share your thoughts you be able to give them your advice in how to do something interesting and succeed in many other ways and that you could be proud of the deck that you built which i am proud of just by looking at it and this is something i don't regret and i again i plan to retire for the meta because it's just like this unstable game that's just won't that, that's some, that is most likely dying right now it needs to be fixed and i see no point to continue just constantly buying new decks I would rather invest something that I feel that I, of it, that I feel fond of, that is going to make my money's worth, and getting the experience that I always uh, dreamed of, which I am eventually going to in the future, and which I have in the past. But overall, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to check for more upcoming content later in the future. Be sure to check your notifications. Comment, like, subscribe. Thank you.